the Prusa magnetic removable bed is still one of the best features about the Mark III. But did you know you can get a BuildTech FlexPlay system for almost any other printer? When I reviewed my Tebow Tornado, it came with a glass bed that I found worked really well for PLA, but not quite so good for ABS and PETG. Since that review, I've experimented with more build surfaces, trying to get the most out of that printer. Glass works really well for a lot of people and a lot of the time me as well, but when it comes down to it, I'm just too impatient to wait for it to cool down for it to separate nicely from the surface. Yes, I know while it's still hot, you can get a spatula and pry it off that way, but these days there's other options around that have the best of both worlds. Before this video, the previous system I had on my Tornado was this easy peelsy system, but as you can see, this one's seen better days. It's safe to say my easy peelsy sheet had suffered a few mishaps, but these were obvious. The less obvious things were the lumpy surface that had been introduced best seen from the underside. This can also be represented after probing the bed as a giant volcano in the middle where the prints were commonly lifting and deforming the surface. Now I've had this type of system on three different printers now and this is the only time it hasn't met my expectations. I think something to do with the large amount of plastic put down by the wide nozzle on my Tiba Tornado and probably my impatience in peeling things off has led to this degradation. Anyway, time for a replacement, so what are the options? Easy Peels, he previously worked great on my original Ender 3 as well as the Creality version on my new Ender 3 Pro. Glass works really well, but I really don't like waiting for it to cool down to separate nicely. What I really wanted was that satisfying snap off of the Mark III Prusa. You can do it as soon as the print's over and you never need a scraper. Now you can buy directly from the Prusa website the Mark 52 bed and spares of these, but really it's gonna to be too small for something as large as a Tebow Tornado. Therefore, the only other option is to get the BuildTac flex plate system. Now interestingly, I think this has been around for longer than the Mark III, but no one really talks about it. But honestly, it's a really, really good solution. I highly recommend it because I've already fitted it to my Cocoon Create Touch. Let's have a look what you get in the box and then we'll look at how to install it. In the packaging, you get a BuildTac sticker, which you may or may not like to put on your printer. You get instructions for printing on BuildTac and then you get a larger illustrated instruction sheet on how to install your FlexPlate system. As you might expect, you get a sheet of BuildTac to match the dimensions, however you can stick on any adhesive surface that you want. You get the spring steel flex sheet, which of course is magnetically stuck to the base underneath. And one side has a nice embossed BuildTac flex plate logo. The final component of course is the base. It looks like BuildTac 2, but you can't print onto it, and I note there it says it can go all the way up to 120 degrees. On the underside, underneath a clear adhesive liner are all of the magnets that hold it together. We're going to start by peeling off the warning sticker and then we're going to get a deburring tool and clean up the edges. In my opinion, the quality of this has improved since the last time I installed one of these on my Cocoon Create Touch, but it's still nice to have one of these tools around. They're only a little bit over $10 and it cleans it up just that little bit more so you can't cut yourself. It's pretty important to remove all of the fingerprints you've had from handling it so far, so a little bit of IPA and then a scrub with some paper towel will get you ready to stick on the build tack sheet. I like to peel off the very edge and then use something like an old credit card or in this case a room card from a hotel and I like to use it almost like a squeegee. If you peel the adhesive back bit by bit and then squeegee it towards the opening, you should be able to gradually work your way across, having it with no bubbles at all and completely flat. Now on the TiVo Tornado, the printing area is in the middle of this big glass plate, so I recommend moving it to 0, zero and then putting down a little bit of tape to mark where you need to line up the corner. We can peel off the adhesive liner and then very carefully line it up and place it down, doing one final smooth to make sure we don't have anything underneath and everything is adhered to the glass surface really nicely. The last step is to put on our flex plate and let me tell you if you've never used one of these or the Prusa edition, it doesn't budge at all. It's extremely strong, it's not going anywhere, it's very reliable. Now when I did this on my Cocoon Create Touch, the extra thermal mass slowed down the bed heating quite substantially. But on this Tebow Tornado with its AC mains powered bed, things heat up in only 90 seconds. Now despite the fact that the system is from BuildTac, there's nothing to stop you from putting on any other adhesive surface that you like. You could put on PEI, you could put on Print Bite, anything that comes in a sheet, you can stick it on. And one of the nice things is you could stick a different one on each side to suit different materials. In my case, I have a BL Touch, so the leveling is done automatic. And if I flip it around and have a different thickness, I don't need to adjust anything at all. Anyways, let's get to printing to test it out. And I've got the perfect project to test out this large nozzle and large printer with this system. 
Some of the earliest videos I did on the channel were a build guide for the Vorpal Hexapod. Well now Max is the big brother and I am printing it to feature on this channel. Now the first piece that I tested stuck almost too well. Build tack doesn't need to be as close as glass. So I had my Z offset just a little bit off from previously printing on glass. For the second component, I raised the Z offset and tried this cool orbital octolapse. I'm pleased to say after lifting the Z offset just a little bit, things came off perfectly. You can flex it inwards and then outwards and then all of a sudden the part popped off and I almost broke it as it fell onto the floor. Now we are printing with such a large nozzle, it is hard to get rid of the stringing, but I'll clean up that later with a hairdryer and my Max the Megapod project is well underway. Now the build tack surface is going to wear out. It is a consumable, but it's a lot easier to buy and readily available from a lot of places online. In the past, I found genuine build tack excellent for a range of different filaments. And one of the great bonuses is with this system that you can go all the way up to 120 degrees. Whereas with the Easy Peelzy and the Creality equivalent, it only goes up to 80. That's going to wrap this one up. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment below if you tried this system, are you interested in it? One thing I haven't mentioned is the price. This one cost me 140 US. So it's a little bit more on the expensive side, but if you're looking for that awesome spring steel magnetic removable sheet functionality, it's pretty much the only way to get it done. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you wanna see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really wanna support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.